If you're anything like me, you probably ignored your doctor's advice when they told you to drink more water for your kidney stones. So in today's video, we're going to explore hydration and how it impacts a hormone called vasopressin that has the ability to influence your risk for kidney stones. Hi, I'm Joey Weichman, and welcome to Stone Relief. So in today's video, we're going to talk about vasopressin and how it influences your risk for kidney stones. Now, Vasopressin is also known as the antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, and this is something that is produced in the hypothalamus of the brain. And vasopressin and ADH is responsible for controlling a number of things throughout your body, but most importantly, these are kind of the ones that we're going to talk about today, which is urine concentration, which is, as if you've seen our last video on urine osmolality, is directly related to your risk for kidney stones, blood concentration, pressure, and volume, definitely important, Sodium levels, also important, and then also kidney function, also very, very significant when it comes to kidney stones. And then lastly, as a kind of like a total sum of all these things, vasopressin or the antidiuretic hormone ADH is responsible for maintaining water balance in the cells. And as we talk about in the next piece of this, uh, next chapter rather, you'll understand how all these things tie together because it is this particular balance that triggers everything that has to do with vasopressin and relates to your risk for kidney stones. All right, let's dive into this water balance thing within the cells. So what I mean by this is that when things like sodium, other electrolytes, glucose, and other substances in the blood change level or increase or decrease, this is gonna trigger a reaction by the brain that's going to release vasopressin, also known as the antidiuretic hormone. And the antidiuretic hormone really is, this is something that triggers water reabsorption by the kidneys in order to either dilute or concentrate blood or urine throughout your body. Now, when I say levels, I'm talking about concentration, which is also, I'm talking about osmolality. And if you have not checked out our video on this, I would encourage you to go look at that because it's going to explain this in a little bit more detail. But osmolality is a measure of the particles in a liquid solution, blood or urine. And when you have an increase in osmolality, the body senses things are out of balance, and it seeks to restore this by the use of ADH. So the neurons that are responsible for excreting ADH are very, very sensitive to changes in osmolality. Even a plus or minus two milliosmoles per kilogram of water, which is a measure of osmolality, will trigger the release of ADH. So again, Things are changing in your body that relate to hydration, other levels of things that could be from food. It's going to seek balance through the use of ADH, also known as vasopressin. However, there are some external factors that influence this as well. So things like alcohol are a big time influencer. So last time, if you've ever been out with your friends and you're like having a few drinks and you're like, dang, like I have to urinate quite frequently. Well, this is vasopressin or the antidiuretic hormone at work because alcohol suppresses ADH, which means that you are going to create more urine. On the opposite side of things, nicotine. Nicotine actually increases the presence of ADH, which triggers the reabsorption of water into the kidneys, which is concentrating your urine, and you are going to pass less urine. So if you've checked out our video on smoking's impact on kidney stone risk, this starts to make a little bit more sense because as you have less urine passing, it becomes more concentrated. And the more concentrated your urine, the more opportunity there is for lithogenic factors such as calcium, oxalate, phosphate, uric acid to bind together and form kidney stones. Just a reminder, this information is available in written form on our website. Find the link below in the description. All right, so let's tie this all together as it relates to kidney stone risk. So when it comes to increases or suppression of the antidiuretic hormone in your body, this is gonna impact your urine concentration. And as I'd mentioned before, urine concentration is directly linked to kidney stone risk for most individuals. Because the more particles that are gonna be found in your urine, the higher the likelihood is that they will bind together crystallize and then form kidney stones. However, there is a caveat to this because urine concentration is really only a concern for people who are consuming a diet that has lithogenic or stone forming materials present in it. If you don't have stone forming uh, materials present in your urine, you're not going to form kidney stones. There are a few exceptions to this, which we will cover. However, on the whole, 
If you don't have these factors in your urine, you're not going to form kidney stones. The raw materials, the ingredients are not there. So people who are eating the traditional American diet, maybe a mix of meat and vegetables and a number of other things, this is typically moderate to high in oxalate. And this is a problem for people who form calcium oxalate kidney stones. The other issue is with people who eat vegan or vegetarian diets. And these are traditionally very, very high in oxalate unless you're really paying attention to it. And I can speak to this because I spent about four years as a vegetarian and then as a vegan uh, trying to eat a low oxalate vegetarian or low oxalate vegan diet and I still got kidney stones. So problem is oxalate is cumulative, it builds up in your system and it's really, really tough to flush it out and get it out entirely if you continue to consume things that contain it on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is really, truly only an issue, your urine concentration in particular, if you have those lithogenic stone forming materials present. Now, the other issue is with vegan and vegetarian diets is that you typically have um, an alkalization of your urine that occurs. Now, urine typically should be around neutral, as should the rest of your body. This whole trend towards going alkaline is just completely crazy to me, uh, and it is not good for us. So, your goal really should be to have urine between six and a half to seven and a half with seven being neutral. Because what happens when you go to alkaline in your urine, actually crystallization starts to favor phosphate over oxalate. So instead of forming calcium oxalate stones, you start to form calcium phosphate stones. So if you've ever been wondering well, why this switch may have occurred, because maybe you were following the guidelines from your urologist that tells you to eat less meat and more fruits and vegetables, this could potentially be what's at play here. Um, the other thing too, again, as I talked about, vegan, vegan and veg vegetarian diets are just generally gonna be higher in oxalate. There's no way to avoid that. Now, there are some exceptions to this, as I had mentioned. So if you have cystinuria or you have primary hyperoxaluria type one, this isn't really gonna matter. Your diet will play a role in some things. There are some contributing factors that can take a part of this, but cystinuria is, has to do with protein management, uh, how your body processes, in particular, the amino acid cysteine. Uh, so there's a breakdown there genetically. And then primary hyperoxaluria type one uh, is a condition where the, your liver actually synthesizes oxalate from glyoxalate uh, and a number of other factors found in your body and creates oxalate. And then those things bind together with calcium in your kidney to form calcium oxalate kidney stones. Fortunately, cystinuria and primary hyperoxaluria type one are exceptionally rare maybe less than 1% of the population of kidney stone formers have these type of conditions. So for the majority of you that are out there, this information here about your diet is truly the largest lever arm outside of hydration, which is what we're talking about today, in order for you to manage your risk for kidney stones. And hydration is something that we're gonna talk about in this last chapter. All right, guys and girls, let's wrap this up real quick and get back to the central point for why we're here today, talking about why hydration matters for kidney stone risk. So when you increase the amount of water that you drink, you are lowering or limiting the excretion of that antidiuretic hormone in your body. When this happens, when ADH is low, urine osmolality also goes down or sits at a normal level, and you also are gonna be passing more urine. And as we've talked about, if you are eating the standard American diet or a vegan or vegetarian diet and you have these stone forming particles in your urine, well, if you are not drinking enough water, there's more opportunity for those things to crystallize and form kidney stones. However, if you're managing this appropriately, you're drinking the right amount of water that you should be drinking, guess what? You have a less risk for kidney stones. And if you're curious to know how much water you should be drinking, we'll link a card up here at the top on our blog for hydration and there's some recommendations there and how much you should be drinking over the course of the day. And it will also offer some strategies for you to help make sure that you can actually make this happen because going from not drinking as much water as you should to trying to drink as much water as you should can sometimes be a challenge and we have a few ideas for how you can successfully implement that into your day. Visit our website if you'd like to join a community of people learning to manage their kidney stones naturally. See you in the next video.